And good afternoon or good eve early evening, um, everybody. Uh, hello and welcome. If you can see me and hear me okay, uh, please let me know in the chat if everything is working fine uh, because I've, I've actually got a new version of the software today. So straight away, you can see that it's not working. Um, the chat windows are not working, even though I've already authorized both of them. So I'm going to authorize them again right now. There you go. That one's working. Scott's here. Paul Allwood is here. And the reason I've updated the thing is that the uh, the app now assures me that it is working with the Facebook chat. So if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, if you've been watching my live streams on Facebook in the last couple of days, um, you'll notice that the Facebook live chat has not been working. Apparently they have fixed that, but I just need to put my details in here. So yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube and you can hear me and see me, uh, looks and sounds great. Excellent because I've used another setting for the microphone today as well. Matt's here as well. Cool. Bear with us a minute. I'm just going to type some things in here. And this time I'm hiding the keyboard underneath the table, unlike last time where I did it in full view of everybody so you could actually see what my password was, which wasn't very clever. But I'm not very clever. Right. So hopefully this is working. Uh, and if you are watching this on Facebook, uh, then... Yeah, please, please post a message there to let me know that that's working. Because um, if it isn't, well, I'll be a bit miffed with them again. So anyway, what we're doing today, again, yeah, if you're watching this on Facebook, go over to there. Um, I'm just going to open up Facebook on my computer and see if it's going out. Because of course, yeah, it looks like it's going out. Uh, there's no comments, but I am going to write a test comment here test comment and hopefully that will appear here. If it doesn't, it does. Yay. So Facebook chat is working. YouTube chat is working. Matt's bu busy making baguettes. I think Matt is about to uh, give up his career and become a baker. I think. I think that's what's going to happen. Um, David Ellis is here having a slight sync issue. Now it could be um, because, yeah, let everybody else let me know if things are synced. The way that we can work this out is I'll clap. Uh, and let me know if the sound comes out at the same time. So one, two, three. So yeah, let me know if the sound came out earlier or later because because I've used the new microphone setting, um, I have adjusted the offset by 200. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to I'm going to put the offset down to zero. Okay, I put the offset down to zero. So yeah, apologies for those people. Uh, although Big Stop Trucker says not no issue on your end. Right, what I've done, I have changed the offset to from 200 to zero. Uh, let me know how that is because, um, yeah, it, it used to be set at 200 for ages. Anyway, what we're doing today, yeah, let me know in the chat if that's better or worse. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing the solo playthrough of Cooper Island, which is currently, I'll be honest with you, my favourite game of, uh, certainly of the Essen releases this year. Um, and it's hard to remember now we're in near the end of November. It's hard to remember what came out in, you know, February or March. But Essen is normally the, the time of the year where all of the big new releases come out. Uh, and this is certainly my favourite one at the moment. Um, so sound is later than the video for Scott. Sound is later than the video. Yeah. So, OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the settings. I'm going to set the offset back to 200. Because that's what I've had it set up for weeks, and it's been, it's been fine. Um, so we'll see. Seems better at zero. Oh, right. Okay. Put it to zero, then. Could be because I'm using a different widget plugin thingy for um, the sound that the offset should be at zero. So, okay. Right. We'll leave it at zero. Thank you very much. So, Cooper Island. Um, I'm not going to be doing a tutorial in this. I am just going to be doing a solo playthrough. So if you don't know how to play the game, you'll probably pick up some of it as you're watching this. But I have done an actual tutorial video uh, on the channel. So maybe you want to go and watch that one and come back and watch this one later on. Um, I've already done the setup. So we're playing with the solo setup map. Now the solo, oddly enough, the solo rules don't come with the base game. They are a little mini expansion, which I picked up at Essen Spiel. Uh, it's a 24 card expansion and it explains how you play. So we've done the setup according to this. And just for those people who know how to play the game but don't know the solo game, this is the Cooper area here. 
and you pick a strategy card. And now I chose one at random, but you're not supposed to. You're actually supposed to choose a strategy card. There are four strategy cards. That has a particular set of setup instructions on it, uh, which tells me which cards to put here of these royal, what are they called? Royal orders? Yeah, royal orders. Uh, and which ones to put on my side. They're actually supposed to go to the right of this card here, but I've arranged them like this. I'll tell you what. There we go. Sound is back. <laughs> Audio is gone. Thank you for letting me know. Um, but yes, teething issues with the new software. It's the, well, it's the same software, but I've had to make a number, of, a number of tweaks and changes to it. So hopefully everything is working fine. Again, freeze frame. Uh, well, it, it, is it? OK. So apparently freeze frame. I'm going to go to the YouTube, uh, see what's happening. No, nope, looks like it's going out OK. Yeah, looks fine at my end. Sound is back. Yep, sound is back. And I'm just going to up the brightness a little bit on here so you can see what's going on a little bit clearer. There you go. Right, so I'm back. Everything's back. Sound is back. Excellent. So what was I saying? <laughs> this is Cooper's area. So this is Cooper's setup area. You're supposed to choose a strategy card yourself. I chose one at random. Uh, so I have the strategy that whenever I perform the supply a cargo ship action, I get an extra helm point, movement point. Remind me what they're called. Um, and whenever I perform the action build a statue, Cooper gains an anchor. Uh, anchors are bad. So that that is extra benefits for certain things that I do. Uh, we've also got Cooper's action deck all ready to go. We've also chosen a difficulty level, and I'm playing at difficulty level one, which tells me to put these five resources in here. I've also got the window open, so if you can hear some background noise, um, that's what that is. And we had a horrendous rainstorm about 10 minutes ago that was really nice. Um, and then I add these three cards to here. So I think we're all done with the setup. Now, Cooper only has one boat, um, and we basically, the, the round sequence is on these, these cards here. Uh, Adam's here as well. Thank you very much for joining in. It's fine you were just very still. But yeah, it seems to be working now. So, five rounds as normal, tracked by these cards here, which this time I have them in the right order. Uh, and what we do is we do A first, which is carry out your income phase as usual. Cooper does not carry out the income phase. So, bearing in mind, in this game, I want to be supplying cargo ships. So, to supply, supply that cargo ship up there, I'm just going to get rid of this keyboard while trying not to press the buttons. Um, if you notice that there's another chair here, that's because while I was getting set up ready for filming, Loki decided to come in and keep me company and stole my chair. So Loki is sat right here now on the chair, aren't you Loki? Ignoring me, totally ignoring me. Um, right, Adam says he's really looking forward to playing this. Yes, you should. Fantastic game. Right, I got my houses the wrong way around. There you go. So yes, we do my income. So income is these two steps here. Uh, oh, I haven't chosen my initial two landscape tiles, or double landscape tiles as they're called. Right, they are my initial two double landscape tiles. So I get to place one of these on the board, and I also get to place an island. And I was saying, I want to be fulfilling this. So I'm probably going to need. You get a discount if the Harbour Master is on there. So I'm going to be looking at getting the discount in gold because gold is really hard to get at the start of the game. He says, no, actually I could. I'm going to put that down. And the first one you put down must be on this side. So that comes with a wood. And you actually get the benefit of playing the islet tile straight away. So I'm going to take a gold and I'm going to put it there. That's that. Then I get to place one of these on the board. And what I'm actually going to do if I can do this, yes, I can. I am going to, as a free action, or an any time action, I think they're called, 
Uh, these are going to get moved to here. You have too many royal orders. Well, you say that, but it said in Cooper's royal order display, place royal order cards three and four. And in your royal order display, put one and two. And then on the difficulty setup, it said, add these three royal orders to your royal order display, five, six, and seven. So I'm just following what's printed on the cards. <laughs> if it's wrong, then the cards are wrong. Um, David Ellis said, this has been your game of the year as well. Right, and Charlie's saying that the solo expansion was very hard. Oh dear, we will see. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've done that, I've taken a gold, I have done my anytime action on removing these, and then I'm gonna put this on the board. And settlements, if you don't know the base rule, settlements can go on top of any type of terrain, but otherwise terrain has to match. So that's going there, like so. That gets me a brown cube on here, which is actually worth two, because it's now at level two. I don't have the side camera on now, so unfortunately you can't see that this is now level two, and this is now level two as well. So there's, there's the two cloth that I need. I just need an extra two gold, no, an extra one gold, and I can fulfill that order this round. That's my plan, <laughs> whether it works or not. You can't do very much in this game. You only start with two workers. You get two actions, and there's only five rounds. But there's lots of other bits you can do as well. Right, next, Cooper and you take alternate turns, alternating turns. Cooper is always the starting player and takes one more turn than you because he's a cheated dog. Um, on Cooper's turn, draw one card from the top of his action deck, carry out all the instructions from top to bottom, and then place it on the discard pile. Further rules. When you place a worker on top of one of Cooper's workers or on top of a worker of the third colour, Cooper gains a helm point. Right, okay. Uh, Matthias is saying you'll check. Yes, well, I've, I've, I've just read out what's on the cards here. So Cooper's action card. The first card is either H1 or F1 because of the setup instructions here. Well, sorry, I, I pick F1 or F2 at random and then H1 or H2 at random. They get shuffled and they're the top two and everything else is the six underneath. That's the setup for this strategy card. So Cooper places one normal worker onto the round worker space of action section H. Okay. Uh, if this space is already occupied by his worker or if he has no normal worker left, he puts a special worker on the square worker space instead. If Cooper thereby places his worker on top of one of yours, you may take a resource cube of your choice from the depot uh, and place it onto your marketplace. Also, Cooper gains an anchor. I guess that's if he puts it on top of mine, right. If the harbour master stands upright, lay it down. No, that's the action I wanted to take. Oh, all my plans gone to waste. Also, uh, if Cooper has his has this royal order card in his royal order display number four, which he does, he gains a movement point. Right, and whenever he gains a movement point, we just move him along to the next sandbank. There you go. Cooper is a good boy. Top card just off screen. Oh, there we go. Thank you. So yeah, the cost of that is three gold and two cloth, but you get a discount if the Harbour Master is standing up. Unfortunately, yeah, all my plans gone to waste. I mean, you can still do other things. There are other things that I can do. That goes to the discard pile. It's now my go. So I need to decide, am I gonna have a change of plan? Because I also, I get bonuses for building statues. Now building a statue is two wood and two gold. Well I've got one wood and one gold. So maybe I could do this or I can just fulfill this one instead but this one's harder to fulfill. I can still do that one but I need three gold. Um, and I'm not sure how I'm gonna get three more gold at this stage in the game because to get gold it's basically it's this, this islet tile that I've placed here or you can trade for it, but that's really expensive. Um, you can build this boat, but to build the boat, I need three money and a coin. Haven't got that. Or you build a mountain up to like level three, and then you get then you get the gold. So if I can get a mountain up to level three with one action, because then I need to use my second action to go on here, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna happen. So just like when you're playing against r other real people, they might do things that mess you up. And that's exactly what Cooper has done. Read my mind, knew what I wanted to do. So what we're we gonna do instead? 
Huh. Well, if we think about next turn, I'm going to get this next turn, hopefully. So I need, I, I, I'll get another gold because I'm going to move this ship across that. So I'm going to get the gold. That's fine. I, I will need three cloth. So I'm going to just start putting stuff on the board, I think. So I am going to choose the action of... See, I've got these anytime actions as well, but I've only got three cartography points. Um, oh, the designer's here. Hi. Thank you very much for, for joining in. Um, yeah, there's no, no, so I can't, I could spend one turn and I could put a mountain on the board. That would be level one. But then I, there's no way I could increase it to get, get the extra gold. So yeah, I am going to choose a different action. And I think I might just choose the action of drawing two tiles out of the bag which is pretty lame. Try to think, can I build a boat? I can't build a boat either. No, so I just get two tiles out of the bag. I'm setting myself up for better turns next turn. And that is it, that is that action. That is done. Right, Cooper, what are you gonna do? Woof. Cooper action F1, right. Cooper places one normal worker onto the round space of F. I should have known that it was F and H actually. Yeah, actually thinking about this, I knew that the top two cards were F and H. And I didn't realize at the time, but they relate to the action spaces. Um, so yes, yes, I should have known that. Right. Yada, 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 yada. Right, Cooper gains in any case a movement point. There you go. Movement points are basically victory points, um, if you don't know. Uh, and he has... And if he has his royal, this royal order card in the royal order display, number three. Cars are moving outside. If it's too noisy, let me know and I'll, I'll close the window. Uh, he gets another movement point. And you always move from one sandbank to the next. Right, that is that done. Me next. So for my second action, I really should. Um, oh, he says that. Oh. See, I'm going to need another food when it comes to feeding phase because you need two food at the end of the round. So I'm going to have to place something on the board and I should probably start building up my mountains in order to get the gold. That's what I should be doing. So I am going to go here, which gets me to draw another one out of the bag. That should do me now for the rest of the game, I think. I've drawn enough tiles which you can't quite see on camera. Let's just shuffle everything along a little bit. I had it all set up and then I jiggled things around a little bit. Oh, the boat's got these. There we go. It's almost enough, isn't it? Right, so um, that was that. Now I'm gonna place something on the board and get the appropriate resources. So we're gonna be placing, uh, yeah, we're gonna be placing this one. And I'm setting myself up ready for potentially next turn doing some shiving. So which Royal Order cards have I got? I've got that one. So I'm gonna put that there like that. Uh, and that comes with a cloth, because it's a level one settlement, and a stone, because it's a level one mountain. You only get gold if it's level three or higher. <laughs> of course I'm woofing. Uh, can we see your tiles, please? Tell you what, if I move these along a bit more. There you go, you can just about see them now. Right, so uh, that's what I've done. I've placed that on the board and I've put that on and that is my go done. And now it's Cooper's go, woof woof. So H2. Uh, if you have unlocked at least one of your special workers, I haven't, then Cooper will place a special worker onto the square worker space of action H. If you have not yet unlocked a special worker, or if the square worker space is occupied, he places a normal worker onto the round worker space instead. If Cooper thereby places his normal worker on top of one of yours, 
And I don't think he can. What happens? No point, uh, no point action in the first round will be hard. Uh, right, yes. Um, if you have unlocked at least one of your special workers, then he places a special worker onto the square worker space of H. If you have not yet unlocked a special worker, or if the square worker space is already occupied by Cooper, which it's not, he places a normal worker onto the board, on, a normal worker onto the round worker space instead, but that's already occupied by himself. So is he allowed to do that? When you place a worker on top of Cooper's workers on uh, the third color. Right, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat, Matthias or Oda. Um, but I'm not sure what it does. It's gone through all of the stuff about if he's placing a special worker. I'll wait in the chat for an answer because I'm not sure what to do here. Because the normal rules of the game are you cannot use the space which you've already used. Um, and I'm not sure if that rule applies to Cooper. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. 20 second delay on what I'm doing to answers in the chat. Uh, yes, he is. Yes, he is what? You can also use the third colour. Right. I'm not sure what my question was now, but you said, yes, he is. So, yeah, I'm not sure when the third colour comes in. I'm also not sure when the depot comes in. Um, OK, so I'm going to play that it can go onto its own space and let me know if that is wrong, but I'm going to carry on. So it goes there. And what does it do? Uh, it just says if Cooper has this royal order in his display, which he does, he gains a movement point. Okay, and is that is that it? It doesn't do anything else. Uh, the card says take a special worker, so use a special worker. Does it? No. It says if you have not yet, if you have not yet unlocked a special worker, which I haven't, or the square worker space is already occupied, he places one normal worker onto the round worker space instead. So it doesn't say to use a special worker. This is H2. Unless there's been a mistranslation issue or something, which is which is possible. But no, it specifically says to place a normal worker on the round worker space. So that's what I've done. And it's got a movement point. And there we go. So that's three actions. Uh, when you gain a new worker, which I haven't done yet, right, now we're going to see. So first, carry out Cooper's cleanup phase as follows. Return Cooper's workers from the Central Island board to card 10, which is here. Uh, and then return any workers of the third colour to the general supply. Don't take back your own workers yet. If there are any milestone tokers on, on card 7, which there are not, then you would move them here. And then finally, shuffle the discard pile and place it face down on top of Cooper's action deck. Oh. So. Okay. So does that mean it's basically going to do these three actions for the whole game? Hmm. Shuffle the discard pile. That's this. And place it face down on top of Cooper's action deck. So it's just going to be doing the same three actions for the whole game. Have I got that right? That seems odd. That seems very odd. Afterwards, carry out your cleanup phase as usual, but note the following rule when you return your workers in step five. So step C is I have to pay two food. Oh, I did it wrong, didn't I? Yeah, I was supposed to put a meadow down. Right, sorry, I put the wrong piece down. I meant to put that down. Right, nobody's watching. So, one food, two food. That is my food spent. Uh, can't do any of that. I haven't got that. I haven't got that. Right, so step five, return workers. 
Onto each worker space in action sections A, C, E and G on which you had a worker, place the same type of worker as the third colour from the general supply before you return yours to the board. Right, that's where the third colour comes in. So it's basically, it's a little bit like uh, Feast for Odin, it locks those spaces. So Matthias is saying he does the same actions again and again unless you have a milestone. Wow. So he's always going to be doing F, H and H. And it was my strategy to do H. I might just have to scrap that and do something different. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to, because uh, there's no way I'm going to compete with him. Right, that was step five. That's done, that's done, this moves on. And we go to round two. So round two, um, yeah, we do the income thing. So what are we going to do now? Well, I'm going to need some more food. So I think we might be doing some transferring of that to here. If we're going to go with a statue this turn, remove a statue and then place a statue, but that's the same action. So you can't do both of these because you can't use an action space that you have already used. We could do we getting some money um, because and then try and build a boat, which is ink and boats are quite good. Ian's here. Hello, evening, Ian. Thank you very much. Uh, when you gain new workers, Cooper will do other actions. Yes. Right. That's the bit I've not actually done yet, but I've got to unlock a milestone first. And at this rate, that's not going to happen anytime soon. So these strategy cards, that was kind of what I was trying to do, but it's actually what Cooper's trying to do as well. And it's giving me an extra bonus if I was to do it because it's actually harder for me to do. Yeah, so I should have been not going with what the strategy card told me, uh, but actually trying to do something different. Anyway, right, income. So I'm gonna place an eyelet tile and I'm gonna put it here and that gets me a coin. You know, very limited storage space here. Um, then I am going to place one of these tiles and I think, do we want to shiv? So you can get an extra coin. You can get an extra coin for two cloth and I've got two cloth there. So that two cloth could become a coin which could immediately buy me a boat. We can do that. But then what am I going to do? Am I going to go down the boat route? I think I am. So I'll probably take the income boat and start generating money. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So what do I need here? Um, we're going to need some more wood at some point. So I'm going to shiv. So you can shiv. Um, it's one of these actions. It's not shiv, shim. Shivy stabbing somebody, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to spend one of these cartographer points to shim that in there. So that goes there. That goes there. So we have a wood on there, which is worth two, because that's level two. And we have a food on there, and that's also worth two. Right, that is the income done. So now we're going to B. And in B, again, we take it in turns. Cooper goes first. Cooper is H2ing. If you have unlocked at least one of your special workers, no. If you have not unlocked one, right. So he's basically placing a worker on H and he's getting a movement point, which is all the way to there. Now, rules about Coopers. Uh, yeah, there's some extra rules on these cards here. When Cooper gains helm points, his ship moves clockwise as normal. Any islets are ignored when he reaches the bay water space or, or your harbour. So he's reached that. Place a logbook token without performing the action from the general supply next to his play area. He pay no, pays no harbour fee. Right. So he gets a logbook token. There you go. Which is effectively five points at the end of the game. Well, it is five points at the end of the game. Um, let's just check that there's anything... Else I've missed. When he gains anchor tokens, the Royal Order cards never receive any workers. You can place a worker onto a Royal Order card, a, a, one of yours as usual. There you go. I think that's it. 
Yeah, so it's just the wording on H2 that doesn't seem to be quite right, certainly in the English version. Um, anyway, we've done it, my go. Now, <coughs> I've got two money and I've got a wood, which is not quite enough. In fact, I've got loads of wood. I've got one two there and another two there. I'm all right for food, so I don't need to worry about that. I've got a nut in the back of my throat, so apologies for this. This is why I'm um, coughing a bit. How do I get the extra money? I mean, I can spend two cloth for money. So there is the two cloth, which I could just convert to money as an any time action. The other, the other option is that I go here, get three cartography points and a money. I mean, three cartography points is nice. Well, let's do that first. So I'll go here, I get three cartography points and a money. It's just about filled up my spaces. Okay, and then, oh, I forgot to woof for Cooper. So woof, woof. Scoopers go. F1, we know what that is. That goes on there. Uh, it gets a movement point, which is all the way around to here. And he also gets another movement point because that's there. I think I'm being beaten. <laughs> Slightly. Because he's got seven, add 20. He's already got 27 points and I've got none. Um, right, my go. So I am now going to go with this action and I am going to spend the three money that I've got. You don't have to buy these in order. The first time I played, I thought you had to buy them in order, but you don't. Um, three or, and a wood, and I'm going to have that one, which goes on there, and I get the money straight away. Boom, that's it. That's my go done. Cooper's uh, third action in round two. Woof, woof. H1. So Cooper places a normal worker onto the round right. If it's already occupied, he places a special worker onto the square worker space instead. But either way, he doesn't actually do the action. He just does this. So he lays that down. Um, and he gets a movement point because he's got that order card there. So another movement point. There you go. You're being beaten by a dog. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, right. So carry out Cooper's cleanup phase as possible. Return the workers. And any workers of the third colour. Um, none of that, none of that. Shuffle the discard pile and put it face down on top. And then I do mine. So I pay two food, which is just that one, because that's level two. Uh, then we put workers on there and there. So I can't do those actions again without paying for it next time. Um, and then we move on to round three. Done that, 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 done that. Right, round three, income. <sighs> Josh is here. Hello to Cooper Island from Cooper Tire, your employer. Cool. <laughs> you work for Cooper Tire. Tire manufacturer, or do you replace tires, or something like that? Right, my go. Income. What was I planning to do? I was planning to build another boat, because then that gets me another worker. To do that, I'm good. Oh, I should have got a movement point. Almost forgot. If somebody in the chat told nobody in the chat told me. Uh, Lawrence is here. Just got in from work, but you'll catch up. Thank you for joining in. Yeah, I should have got a movement point when I placed that there, which I would have put. Oh, I should have done that that way. I'm just going to cheat. Yeah, I'm just going to I'm just going to cheat a little bit and undo what I did. There you go. Because it's the solo game. It's fine. So with that movement point, I'm going to move that to there, which gets me a money. Right, so I have two money. Did I do my income? I think I did. Yeah. Yeah, let me know. Did I do my income from this boat? I think I did, because that's where that one money came from. Because I had three last turn. I spent the three to buy that boat. So I think that's that's there. Um, oh, no, that, yeah. Hang on, am I, am, I, am I cheating, cheating? Yes, I am cheating. I'm going back too much. When I got that movement point, that wasn't there. Right, I am correcting my mistakes. So yeah, that islet wasn't there when I got that movement point. Or was it? Yeah, it was. Sorry, I'm getting myself all flustered here. It was, that was round two. So in round 
Three, I haven't done any of my income yet. I'm about to do my income for round three. So I'm placing one of these, I'm getting a money. You did not do your income. And Paul's saying, yes, you did income. So <laughs> Paul and Matt are disagreeing whether I did income or not. Um, I don't think I did. I think that's right now because I spent the three money to buy the boat. I put the boat on there, got the one movement point, and it's that movement point that I forgot to do. And with that movement point, I would have gone there. That would have got me that, which wasn't income. Next round, we get the one income for that, for that. Uh, then I am gonna uh, place one of these on the board and place another islet tile. Yeah, so this is round three. And this time I am gonna place, oh, do we wanna do statues? Or do I want to do something that's going to get me another boat? Because how much wood have I got? I've got four wood. It's money that I need. It is money that I need. But I kind of want to remove a statue at some point. There's so many choices in this game. And you are not going to be able to do very much of anything. And, and I say that as a, as a not as a criticism. It's just, if you're going to go with boats, you're going to do a lot of boats. But you're not going to do much of the other things. Uh, there really isn't enough time to do lots of stuff. Uh, right, I am going to, and you can't shim this. Okay, I'm going to put it there. So I get a wood on there, and I remove a statue from the board, and I'm going to remove this one, which goes on there, ready to be forged. Right, uh, you gave yourself a coin when you built your boat. Statues give Cooper anchors. Ah, yeah, that's when you perform the action, build a statue. Yeah, I think I'm right. I think we've done it right. I think we're all good. I was just getting myself messed up. So I've done that, I've placed that, I've got the bonus. I'm now placing one of these. That's what I haven't done yet. And at this point, and since I've got five cartography points, I could do some shimming. And I think I will. I am going to shim uh, this into there. So that costs one cartography point, And that comes with a level two food cube and a level two cloth cube. Right, so I've done the income. It is now uh, Cooper. I should have put these on top. Josh is saying it's a tire manufacturer. Cool, right. So they go on top there, and it is now phase B, Coopers go, woof woof, H2, uh, which is that and a point. Done. My go. So I can't build a boat just yet because I need three money at least, and I only have two, although there is the cloth there. The cloth is totally staying there and saying, use me. So I could build another boat. Oh, but if I build another boat, I have to pay the, other, uh, the, the third player. I have to pay something. Might still be the right thing to do because that boat's gonna get me a second thing. Yeah, so I'm gonna place this on top of somebody else. And whenever you do that, you have to pay a money or a cube. So I am going to use my anytime action and remove this cube and put it here and then pay that cube in order to perform the action that another player has already done. And then I'm gonna spend the two wood that's on there, this two cloth as if it was a money, using this action, another money and another money Harbour Master is standing up. Yes, that is correct, because I drew H2. It's only H1 that puts the Harbour Master down. And I get another boat. Now, this boat is going to be, uh, it's going to be this action, which goes on there. It gets me a movement point, which is gonna be, ooh, ooh. Hmm. Okay, no, it's going to be this one. That's going to go on there. 
which does two things. It triggers the boat, which is a cartography point, and it gets me a movement point. I'm going to move this, and because I've passed over that islet, I'm going to get a gold. I'm also going to get me cannons out and blow up uh, Cooper's ship, which is the unreleased expansion set currently in development. Right, I think that's what I'm doing. And I have built my second boat, which means I have unlocked this and I am going to use it. So I flip it over now and if I want to, I can put it on here and I'm going to. So I get my extra worker right away and I'm going to take that worker, which means I have to lose this one and I claim one of these. And I'm going to put it on that one because that gets me points for having income boats. Right. When you gain a new worker by moving one of your fulfilled milestones to a corresponding higher space, take any one of Cooper's milestone tokens and put it face down there. Okay. Why did you put a yellow worker on action B? It only goes on actions A, C, E, and G. Thank you. I've forgotten that. Right. So I don't have to pay anything. Give me my wood back. Thank you very much for that reminder. It did say that. I'd forgotten it. It's only A, C, E, and G where you put the third, the third colour. Right, so I've done that, I've done that, I've unlocked this extra worker and I've had to place that one on one of my cards, which I've done. Um, so it is now Cooper's... Was that my first action? Yeah, that was my first action. Woof, woof. F1. So this one goes on here. Um, and it gets two movement. So one, getting it another logbook token but it doesn't pay any harbour fees I think that's what it said it what it said and two yeah it gets a logbook token he pays no harbour fees cheating dog right that was Cooper's second action my second action I now have this square worker now this square worker unlocks a whole host of extra spaces. Um, yeah, so what do I want to do? Do I want to build a statue and remove a statue? I think I do. I think that's what we want to do. Yes, let's do that. So I'm going to go here and the square worker means that this slash turns into a plus. So the first thing I'm going to do is the right hand one, which is build a statue. Cost me two gold and two wood, which is one of the cost that you can pay. Is that wood? Yeah, it's two, two wood and two gold or three wood and three stone. Um, and I take my statue and it has to go on the highest elevation possible on an empty space on the highest elevation. So I'm going to put it there in the woods. Oh no, I've got a settlement. I'll put it in the settlement because if you put it in a settlement you get an extra movement point. So one helm point for building the statue and one helm point because I built it in a settlement. Um, and I don't want to do that because I'm about to get to do that for free. So I'm just going to move this one. Bad planning. Very bad planning. Um, done that. And then whenever I build a statue, Cooper gets an anchor. There you go. So uh, when Cooper gets an anchor, what do you do with it? It says here somewhere. When Cooper gains anchor tokens, place them under his ship as usual and remove them according to the usual rules. So his ship is currently... Anchored. Yeah, I'll just put it there. That's his ship, not mine. I'm not going to get anchored, he says. Um, and then I take another statue. So I'm going to take uh, this one. Put that there. Right, that wasn't a bad turn. Happy with that. And then Cooper's third action, woof woof, H1. Uh, so Harbour Master lays down. Uh, I don't think this really matters because... The workers are going to come off and he gets a movement point. Uh, so that removes the anchor. Right, there we go. Next, Cooper's cleanup phase as possible. So workers come back. Uh, if there are any milestones on here, which there are. So now I move each of them to the following free spaces of your choice and carry out that space's action. So I can either choose an action card from the discard pile and place it face down on the bottom of the deck. Or choose an action card from the discard pile. This card is not shuffled with the rest in the upcoming step three, but stays below card seven. So the chosen card will not be in play during the next round. Or I can choose an action card from the discard pile and put it face down 
on top of the deck. Right. So this is interesting. I can actually influence what you're gonna and what don't I want him to do. So I don't want him to do the statue thing. So I'm gonna get rid of card, I'm gonna move that to there, and I'm gonna put this on the bottom of the deck. There you go. So the F1 is gone. He's not gonna do that. He might do F2, which would be bad. You alright, Loki? Absolute dead to the world. So shuffle the discard pile and put it face down on top of the deck. And then I do my cleanup phase. And now I have to pay three food. Am I in trouble? Yes, I'm in trouble. I don't have three food. So there's two food. And I take an anchor token after saying I'm not going to take any anchor tokens for the one food that I can't actually provide. Right, next. I have a statue on the board, so I get a movement point. So I'll remove the anchor. Uh, have I filled those? No, workers come back. So A, C, G, A, C, E, and G. Right, so those just come back. Nice. No yellow workers. And then that goes back. Right, we're on round four already. This is a quick paced game. Income. So I get one money. I get a cartography point. I need to spend these cartography points. That's what I should have done. I should have put some food on the board. Yeah, I lost myself a point there. So I've done that, I've done that. I put, put an eyelet tile on the board and I am going to put... Oh, I'm running out of these tiles. I said that would be me set up for the game, but it's not. It's not at all. I'm. What's my food expenditure going to be? It's probably going to be three again. So... That's going to go on there. Yeah, so that's going to go on there, which is three food and three wood. Nope, made a bit of a mess there. And then which of these islet tiles do I want to put on the board? Uh, let's put that one, and I'm going to put it there. So I get a stone on there, and I get another tile out of the bag. There we go. Right. Now it is actions. So Cooper first. Woof, woof. Round four. Action number one. H1. Which is lie that down and put that on there and get one movement point. Where's it going? It's going all the way around again. Yeah, he's already been around once. Um, yeah. Done that. My go. What's my plan this turn? I'd like to build another boat because I get points for boats. But I also want to get another statue on the board because that gets me an extra worker. Um, I don't have anywhere near the resources that I need. Oh, actually, I'm only one stone short. Yeah, I am only one stone short. And I could do that by just placing this on the board or shimming not shimming or just yeah just placing a placing a mountain on the board get the stone three stone and three wood is enough to build a statue so i can i can totally do that so let's do it yeah and do i want to place a third statue do i want to use the square worker for this no no i'm just going to place a normal round worker and I'm going to choose the build statue action. So I'm going to build this. Uh, oh, before I do that, I'm going to spend one, two, three, cart uh, no, two cartography points to place a single mountain here, I think. Well, no, I'll tell you what I can do. I can move this to here, and then I'm going to spend three cartography points to actually put that there. Because now when I put a stone on it, that stone is value two. Yeah. And as the action, I'm going to spend one, two, three stone and three wood to put this statue and it has to go here. Which gets me one movement point, which will be here, which gets me a draw out the bag. Love this game. It's just, yeah. 
your first game is going to be a bit of a learning curve, but once you get used to it and you start playing it, it just is really nice. Very tight, very critical decisions, but so under your control, apart from pesky dogs. Right, done that. Got distracted by talking about flavor text uh, because I build a statue. And whenever I build a statue, Cooper gets an anchor because of my strategy card. I now have two statues on the board, so that flips that. Now, do I want to use this straight away? Yes, I totally do. I'm going to use that straight away, and I am going to take... Oh, is it risky taking that? My, my food expenditure would be five. No, that's fine, because I'm going to have six food, and that gets me a bonus point. You can unlock these workers in any order, and these two workers on the right are more expensive. But it, if you then feed all of your workers, you do get extra helm points. And the reason I'm not unlocking this square one is if I did, I'd have to move this to one of these, and I want to keep that square one. So I'm going to unlock this one. It's a little risky, but I'm going to unlock that one. So my food, food costs are now five. Cooper has lapped you. He's a lap dog. <laughs> Very good. I have no idea what this depot is for um, at all. I've not seen any cards referring to it. Maybe it's just cards that I haven't seen. Um, anyway, right, now we move one of those to there, which means I'm going to get to do this again. And that was all my first action. And I'm probably going to build a boat as my second action. Yeah, anyway, we'll see what Cooper does. Woof, woof. Oh. If I'm now taking three actions a turn, he's going to take four. Right, that's how we get through these cards. H2, uh, which is... Puts one... No. Ah, if you have unlocked at least one of your special workers, I have, Cooper places a special worker onto the square worker's base of H. There you go. Right. And then he gets a point. Oh, which isn't a point. It's removed the anchor. There you go. Right, that's that done. Back to me. Now, which of these... Do I want to do next? What What is my plan? Is to try and get five boats. To get five boats, I need money. To get money, I either build settlements to get the cloth, which you can then sell to get money. That's, that's one way of getting money. In fact, there's very little other ways of getting money. Um, but I do need to sort out the food issue. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to abandon the gold idea and yeah, I mean, I can just use uh, cartographer points to place food things on the board if needed. Hmm. Yeah, I want to place that. Now, do I place that with that? What am I going to use the square worker for? That gets me, I'm not bothering with buildings. Maybe I should do some buildings as well. Because with the square worker, I get a discount of two, which means the little building is actually quite cheap, but it needs money. And my money is going, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, th I don't think I'm gonna bother with these. I might be able to do that one. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go for the boats. So I need the money. So I need the cloth on a high level, which means I need to be building settlements on a high level but I also need to be building food on a high level. Wow. So much choice. Let's go with square worker on. Oh. Oh, hello. Square worker on here allows me to activate a boat, which could be a money. I then get another money. I then get three cartographer points. I can use those cartographer points to put a little wood on the board and get the wood and then use my next action to buy a boat. Yeah. That all comes together. But actually, I'm then using a square worker to get one money, whereas I'm best using a square worker there to get two money. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Three cartographer points and the money. Is this better than Maracaibo? Um, so Maracaibo was my favourite game of the year so far until I then played this uh, and this pipped it. So yeah, love Maracaibo, love this. They're my top two games at the moment. 
Uh, when Cooper places a worker on top of you, the resource will receive the, the resource you receive will come from the depot. Oh right, okay, thank you. Right, that's what I did. I got that and I got that. And because you can only do one cartographer action per turn, I'm actually going to use it now. And I'm going to spend three. And I'm going to place one of these um, onto here. So this is height three. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to spend two and I'm going to put it here, which puts one food on it, which I then transfer into here. Yeah, there's method in my madness. Right, Cooper, woof woof. What are you going to do? I was going to do something new. D2. If you have unlocked at least one of your special workers, I have. Cooper places a special worker onto the square worker space of action D. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If Cooper, yeah, 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 yeah. If Cooper has this Royal Order card on his display, he gets a movement, uh, a helm point, which he doesn't. Huzzah! So basically, that was a nothing action for Cooper, which is great. So me, I'm going to build a boat. Have I got the right? Have I got the wood? <laughs> I might have messed this up. Yeah, I need two wood, and I've only got one. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, right. What am I going to do? Think. Think, think, think. I could go in there and that gets three wood. But that's overkill. Um, yeah, I definitely want to build a boat. So, so that's going on the boat space. So I need, yeah, I'm going to have to spend. Yeah, but then I don't have the, oh, I don't have the food. <sighs> right, so I'm going to slightly undo what I did last turn. And I am going to spend three card token points. And I am going to put it there because I would have realized I haven't got enough actions to do what I want to do. So that's what I did earlier on. Right, this turn I am spending two cartography points to put a little wood tile uh, here, which comes with a wood on it. And then I am going to choose this action, build a boat, get a discount of two. So one wood, two wood, and two money allows me to place something on here. Now, which one do we want to place? Um, I think I'm going to place that one. And that one allows me to use uh, any boat that's in play, and I'll get a money. Cartographer point to get wood. Yes, uh, yeah, that's what I did, I think. Um, and I get two helm points. Do I have any anchors? I don't have any anchors. Uh, so I'm going to use one helm point to go there, which removes a statue. So I'm going to take that statue off. I've only got space for one statue because you get more space if you unlock those. And the second helm point is there. Okay, so that's building a boat. I've put it on there. That's my third boat. So that's going to get me points at the end of the game. And then I think that is me done. Cooper's final action. Woof woof. F2. Um, aha! Finally, it's doing something that I have done before. So, uh, oh no, if you have unlocked at least one of your special workers, it puts a special worker onto the square worker space of F. Now, Matthias, you said earlier on, remove the cube food from your board. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, you said earlier on that Cooper uses the yellow, uh, the, the non-player colours, the third colour. I don't know where that is. Let me know where it says that because I couldn't find it um, anywhere when I read it quickly. But you're saying that goes on there. I think that's what you're saying. Um, and it gets a movement point. So it moves here. Yeah, I think that's right. Hopefully that's right. 
I haven't got any more goes, so that is the end of round four. Uh, we now carry out Cooper's cleanup phase as possible. So remove all Cooper's workers. If there are any milestone markers, there are. So I can basically get rid of another one of these. Which of these do I want to get rid of? Uh, well, I can't get rid of it. I can put it face down on top of the deck, which means it'll be the last action that it does. Or I can make it stay here, which means it won't do it next round. I can lock it out from doing an action next round. Which action do I want to lock it out from doing? Probably F. No, I want it to do F, but I want it to do F after me. That will get. Do I want another statue on the board? Or do we just go boats now? We just go boats and money. Hmm. Could build a building. But that costs money, and I need to focus on the boats, which basically means I need money. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one of these I don't want it to do. Uh, next round is the last round, yes. Yeah, I'm not sure here. So I'm going to take F2, and I'm going to put it face down on the deck. So it is going to do it, but it's going to be the last thing it does. Then shuffle these, and then I do my cleanup phase as normal. Right. Now my cleanup phase is a little different. First of all, I have to spend food. I need one, two, three, four, five food. I have six, because I undid what I did. So because I paid all my food, I get a movement point which will be this one, which is a logbook token. Now, when I get logbook tokens, you're right, Loki. I get the bonus that's printed on the back, which is a money. Excellent. It's just what I needed. Right. Then I can do that, can't do that. Statues, every statue I have, I get a movement point. I have two statues, so I'm gonna move this. One, two, which is another logbook token. which is a cartographer's point. Okay. Um, not done that, get me workers back, but that one goes on there. A, C, E, and G, yeah. A, C, E, and G, right, so I get those back. And then we move this on and we are now on the last round, so. Income. I get one money, I get one cartographer point, and I get to use the ability of any boat in play, and I'm going to use that one and take another money. Running out of storage space, but should be okay. Food's the issue. Food is indeed the issue. Oh, hello Thor. Thor's coming to say hello. You coming up? Do you want to be on camera? Yeah, come on. You all wet from being outside. Oh, now that's an upside down cat. There you go. Right. Now there's no dice. Oh, look at all those pieces. Thor loves game pieces. Absolutely loves them. The dice all over the house, isn't there? Oh, you big cutie. Right. Okay. So what we're going to do? This is Cooper. He's a doggy. <laughs> Uh, this is what life is like at my house all day long, really, when the cats come in. Um, I just sit and talk to them all day long. You've totally distracted me now. I had a grand master plan, and then you came along and was all cute. Income, that's what we were doing. We were placing things on the board. We were putting an eyelet on. Oh, no, we were using another boat. Or have I used the other boat? I think I've used the other boat. There you go. Uh, does that yellow special worker come back? Uh, the one that was there from last round? Yeah, I think it does. Thank you. What's that noise? Noise is outside. Right, I'm doing the rest of my income. So, yeah, I need to be careful here that I have enough food moving forward. Um, and I also need wood. So I think this is going on the board. I'm going to spend a cartographer's point. 
to shim and I'm going to shim a settlement in here and put that on there which is a cloth that's worth two which is good because I can get rid of that for money and a wood that's worth two which is good for this right and then I get to place one of these on the board and I've only got this and you can only shim once per income phase so I've already shimmed so I can't shim again. Otherwise, I could have put that on there and that would have been amazing. You going down? Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> there you go. It's probably going off to eat some microphones or something. Don't eat the microphone. It's very expensive. So this is just going to have to go on a flat piece of land. Yeah, they, this is awful. This is, uh, this is bad planning on my part. Maybe I shouldn't have shimmed that in, but that's what I did. I've already done so many undos. So that's going there. I get a food on there and a stone on there. Right, so I've done, uh, I haven't placed an eyelet yet. Aha, that's what I should have done. I should have placed an eyelet and got the wood that way. So yeah, let's do that. Let's not, hang on a minute. Yeah, I think I'm cheating here. <laughs> I think I've put two tiles down this turn. Cats distracted me. Yeah, I think, I think I put that one down by shimming that in. Right, let's undo that. Is that right? I think I've undone it correctly. So let's let let's go again. So I'm going to put this uh, here, and I'm going to get a wood, which has to go here, and then, yeah. Now I'm going to shim. And put that on there. And that is for food. And that could be a gold. But I don't think I want gold. Uh, I think I want cloth because the cloth converts to money and then I can buy another boat. Yeah, so let's take a cloth. Uh, no, actually, sorry, it's stone. It's not cloth. Yeah, it's stone. Do I want four stone? What am I going to do with four stone? Build one of these. Potentially, if I get more wood. Yeah, let's go for it. Because I don't think I need the gold, unless I'm going to try and do that, which is, I need eight gold. Yeah, I'm not going to get eight gold, am I? Okay, we're in the closing stages. There's very little that I'm going to be able to do. But I think that is my income done. I pl I've placed an eyelet, got the bonus, I placed one of these, undid it, did it again, did it twice, undid that, did it again, got the income from all of these and did the cartographer's action. There you go, I did put two tiles, thought so. Right, so now we are in the last round, we are in phase B and Cooper, woof woof, is H2. So he places a special worker on there and gets a movement. Okay that done so me my plan is to build another boat um, but before I build another boat I'm gonna either need some more money or some wood and I need to make sure I've got enough food so how am I gonna get the money well how am I gonna get the wood is quite easy is just by putting a thing on here now, the Cooper space is not actually, it doesn't do anything in the solo game. I don't think. Well, you don't get the Cooper tile, I know that. Um, where does it say? I have read it. 
I have read it somewhere. If you place a, a normal worker onto the free round worker space of action A, you do not gain a Cooper token as usual. Instead, Cooper gains an anchor. There you go. Nice. There you go, mate. You are anchored. And then I am going to uh, gain a cartographer's point and place this on the board. And at this point, I am going to shim and put that there. So that gets me two wood, effectively, and two cloth. There you go. Cooper gets a dog treat when you go there. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Um, yeah, so that's it. I just did that and that and placed that on the board and got that. Right, Cooper's second action, woof woof, H1 which is a normal worker onto round space H. And then this lies down and he gets a movement point, which is there, which is another log book. And then my second action, I think I've given up having any more workers. I just need to hammer those boats out. So I'm going to go, oh, I'm not going to be able to do both. I'm going to go on the discount space and I'm going to buy the big powerful one. So it's going to cost me four money and three wood. So there's one there and two there. Um, and I'm going to take well, it all depends what action I'm going to do for the last turn of the game. Yeah, I don't really know what action I'm going to be able to do. I mean, I have the four stone there. Can I get any more wood? Hmm, what am I going to do with that stone? Can I build a big building? I need two money. I haven't got any money. So that would be a no then. Can't fulfill, uh, can I fulfill any of those? Unlikely. Three gold, am I going to get three gold? Two cloth, I've got the two cloth. Yeah, it's unlikely I'm going to get the gold, isn't it? I mean, if I had four cartography points, then I could put a thing on top of there and that would be five gold. That would be pretty, pretty neat. But I don't have that. Yeah, I just need to take a minute to just think about what action I'm going to do for the last action of the game. And there isn't. Yeah, no, I'm going to take wood. Uh, can I convert it? Because I might be able to place that other statue. We'll see. I'm going to take that one, put it on there, get a wood, which actually goes on here. Mark has just popped in. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, he was anchored. You're right, Paul. Thank you very much. He shouldn't have moved, so he hasn't got that. There you go. Well spotted. I'm glad somebody's keeping me on my toes. It's been a long day. What was I doing? <laughs> I was building a boat and I get three movement points for building a boat. Uh, let's move this one. One. Oh, hang on. I'm going to get some extra bonuses. Aha. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. One, two, three, and I get a wood. There you go. Right. Got cat hairs everywhere now. Um, I think that was it. I think that was my first, my, that was my second action. So, Cooper's third action, woof woof, is D2. So he puts a special worker on D. And then he gets nothing. Yeah. There hasn't been much of him using what I've been doing, but that's probably because I've not been manipulating this as I possibly should have done. My last action of the game, what was I doing? Was it the building? Because I've got the stone. Haven't got the wood. Oh, it was the statue. That was it. I wanted to build a statue. Uh, I'm a wood short. How do I get a wood? Well, four... 
things will convert into one thing. So I can do that. So I go here, I build a statue. I need three stones. So there's the four stone. You don't get any change. So that's the stone paid for. I then need three wood. I've got one here, one here. And then I'm going to use this anytime action, which I've never used. Never used this at all. And that is to basically spend four stuff, which is the two cloth there and two cloth there, for a wood. Uh, and that is the three wood and the three stone for this statue, which has to go on the highest. It's going to go up here in the mountains. That gets me a movement point, which is, it doesn't matter. No, I'll move it to there, which gets me to remove that. Put that there. Um, and I built a statue. And whenever I build a statue, Cooper gets an anchor token. I think I might stop him getting to there. <laughs> Not that it matters. Um, and that is my last action. So Cooper's last action. Jan's here. Hello, Jan. Thank you for popping in. Uh, F2, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't do anything. Because it's placing a special worker, which is going to be one of those there. And that doesn't give me anything. Um, and then he gets a movement point, which he removes the anchor. Right. I think we are done. We now do the income stuff. Uh, that bit doesn't matter. That bit doesn't matter. This matters. I need to pay one, two, three, four, five food. And I have four rats, which means I actually lose out on two points because of that, because I get an anchor token. Um, but then because I didn't feed all of my people, I don't get that extra point there, which is a shame. I do, however, have three statues on the board, which is three movement points. So that's one. No, I'm going to do it on this. One, two, three. So I get a logbook token for passing through, and I get a money and a gold or something, and a tile out the bag. So uh, I'll take a money, I'll take a gold, I'll take a tile out the bag. Because things that you've got left are worth a fifth of a point each, so I'm still going to do it. Right, so that's that. Didn't fill that. Workers come back. Didn't do that. Didn't do that. I think we're done. I think we're ready to do final end game scoring, which is printed on a little card here. Right, after the fifth round, carry out the final scoring for yourself as usual. Right, so I should get the score pad. I don't know where I put the score pad. No, nope, the score pad is somewhere. But we have the final scoring card, so I'm just going to count it. Every logbook token is worth five. Right, now, this is two spaces beyond there. So that's 15, 17, um, 22, and then one, two, three, four, five, 23. That's worth one, but it doesn't matter. So I'm at 23 minus the anchor, 22. So I scored 22 points. It's not enough. I know that's not enough because Cooper, only carries out steps 1A and 1B, which is basically the log books and the ship steps. And he's got two. But then he's 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 14 plus the 20 that's printed on here. So 34. So Cooper scored 34. I scored 22. And that's on difficulty level 1. Uh, so I'm clearly not very good. And pay the harbour. Oh, I need to pay the harbour. Okay, right, yeah, I'll, I'll pay it a stone. There you go. Thank you. I've forgotten that. Um, oh, so did I, I should have been paying the harbour for each of these. Oh, no, you only pay the harbour. You only pay your own harbour. Right, okay, yeah. So there we go. 22 points, and Cooper got 34. If you have played the solo game uh, yourself, please let me know how you found it. Obviously, let me know if I did any rules wrong, but we have the publisher and the designer in the chat, so... Hopefully I got everything correct. Um, but yeah, 22 is obviously... I thought it was okay, but clearly not. So yeah, if you've played the solo game, uh, let me know what score you get against Cooper. Uh, let me know if you've got any tips on how to play. I would I would play this again. It's actually good practice for playing, for playing the real game. Because a lot of the real game is the managing of, of your island here, or your peninsula. In order, as you could see, when I was playing it, it was like, oh, I've forgotten to get the food. I'll just undo this bit. Obviously, if you're playing a multiplayer game, 
players, the other players might not let you undo stuff um, as much as I, I did today. So you've really got to manage this bit uh, carefully to get the resources that you need at the right time. You've got to really plan ahead. If you know you're going to need four wood, you need a way of, of getting that wood. Um, anyway, on the plus side, the dog looks very smart. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and Fred says, it looks fascinating, you'll get a game at GridCon. This is definitely going to get played at GridCon. I suspect this is one of the games at GridCon which is going to be played almost constantly. I think there might only be one copy in the library, and that's my copy. Um, and I already know a whole bunch of people that want to like get it out straight away and, and play it. So, um, yes, there is definitely a game going on on Friday morning at 9 o'clock. I think Luke Hector from Broken Meeple uh, and Steve Tudor from... Polyhedron Collider. I think they're organising a game. I don't know whether there's space in it. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to get played a lot. I would just recommend everybody watch the tutorial video I did because uh, I'm not going to have much time basically to uh, to teach people. Uh, and that's it. What time is it? 20 past six. Right. So yeah, that wasn't bad actually. That was an hour and 20 minutes and it would have been an hour. If I hadn't have fumbled around a little bit, it would have been an hour, which is, which is not bad. Um, if you are interested in the Arkham Horror card game, then at 8 o'clock tonight, so that's in one hour and 40, um, I will be doing chapter two of the Carcosa campaign. And uh, I didn't mention at the start, but this is not a sponsored video in any way. This is only made possible through the support of my Patreon campaign. So if you like the content that I make, uh, you like the videos that I'm making and you want to support the channel, head on over to my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. You can see the link there. Um, and yeah, however much you can afford to support, yeah, as I say, all of the money is going towards improving the channel and producing more content. Uh, Matthias is saying that you'll have the solo deck next year on the BGG Geek Market. Uh, hopefully early next year, but yes, so the solo deck will be available. And yeah, there's multiple different strategies, there's different difficulty levels, um, and the different strategies. It was these cards that I found interesting because Cooper's basically going to do the same action repeatedly until you can get your extra workers and start manipulating the deck. That threw me a bit, but it kind of makes sense because you need to focus. As you could see in this game, I built no buildings. I got no crates, but I got four boats. Now, you'd probably be able to do more than this in a game once you're more experienced with it, but you definitely can't be doing some of this. Well, maybe you should because you need to unlock your workers. I remember the first game I played, I did two of those, I did two of these, and I did two of that, and I unlocked three of these. Um, but yeah, who knows? Anyway, right, I'm gonna disappear now, get some food, do some more GridCon prep, wearing my GridCon t-shirt, by the way, ready for the weekend. Um, and then, yeah, I'll be back here in about an hour and a half's time uh, with chapter two of the Arkham Horror Card game, Carcosa. So yeah, tune in then if you're interested. Until then, thank you very much to everybody who's joined me in the chat today. Thank you to everybody who's watching this afterwards. Uh, again, comments in the, in the show notes. Let me know what score you got against Cooper. And I will now pack this away and put it in the downstairs hallway ready for taking to GridCon. So yeah, thank you very much everybody and I'll see you next time. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.